Hello. In this example, I will show you how to analyze the solver output and especially the sensitivity report. Here's a problem. Um, we produce three products, P1, P2, and P3. The production process uses raw material R1 and R2, which are processed on facilities F1 and F2. The minimum daily demand for P2 is 70 units and the maximum demand for P3 is 240. Given the resources usage per unit of each product, daily resource capacities for each resource and unit profit contribution for each product are shown in the following uh, linear programming on the bottom part here. So I took this linear programming formulation and I solved it using Excel Solver. As a result, I got the answer report. And in the next slide, we'll see the sensitivity report. So what can we learn from the answer report and the sensitivity report? So one question, for example, can be, what is the optimal solution? So when we are talking about the optimal solution, we are talking about the final value in the answer report. Then we can see that P1 will have zero units, P2 will have 70 units, and P3 will have 230 units. This is our optimal point. We can also learn about our final value. In this case, it's a profit and it's $129,000 in this case. So that was our first question that we have learned about um, the solution. Question number two, how do you calculate the slack for F1 source? So on the bottom part of the answer report, we have our constraints and each constraints is defined by the status if it's binding or not and the slack has been calculated for that status. So how actually they found this number 60, what um, Excel Solver did is basically looked at the constraint itself and then calculated the left hand side when substituting the final value, the optimal point into the inequality and we got the left hand side is 370, the right hand side of the constraint is 430. So the slack is the difference between the sides, which is 60. You can also see that the Excel output provide you the left hand side when you substitute your final value into the constraint. Here it is, the 370 here. The same as you did it manually, here on the right hand side. So this is how you calculate slack or surplus depends on um, the case. When there is a slack um, it will be non-binding constraint. Where there is no slack then it will be a binding constraint. Let's see another question. How much raw material one is used at the optimal solution? So raw material one is the third row here in the output and we can see that this is a not binding constraint. Here is the constraint itself. And again, the question is how much raw material is used at the optimal solution. So basically it's asking us if you take the final value and substitute it into the inequality of the constraint, what is the value of the left hand side? And we can see that in this case, if you'll do that, you will see that you will get 280. So this is how much they used from this raw material number one in point of optimality. Let's see another question. Can you determine how much profit would be earned if the profit on product two were to increase by 50%? If yes, state the total profit. If not, explain why not. So this is a question that dealing with sensitivity report and it's asking us if um, the coefficient 
of product two is changing, and in this case, increasing by 50%, how this will uh, impact the total profit. So the first step will be to look at the sensitivity report on the correct row. In this case, it's relevant to uh, product number two, P2. So that's the relevant row. And what we would like to understand, first of all, is what is our objective function right now? And right now, this is our objective function. And the question is asking what happened if the coefficient here, the 200, will change, basically increase by 50%. So in this case, we need to calculate the delta. So 50% over 200, it's a, an additional $100. And once we know the delta, we go to the allowable increase and we check if that's in the allowable increase uh, given in the output. So allowable increase is 300 and we have an increase of 100. So that is within the allowable increase, which means that the point of optimality remain the same. As long as it within the range of optimality, the changes in the range of optimality, the point of optimality stay the same. What will change is the profit. So what left us to do is um, to take the new profit per unit, which is now 300, write again the objective function formula and this time you see it's a 300 as the coefficient then substitute the optimal point that remained the same was not changing and now we're getting that our new profit is 136,000. Let's see another question it says how can you determine how many units of each product you should make if the number of products of R2 available decrease to 200? If yes, state the numbers of units. If no, explain why not. So again, this is a sensitivity analysis, but this case, pay attention to the wording. It says, can you determine how many units of each product you should make? So this is, can I determine the point of optimality given that the available um, resources for R2 is decreased to 200. So what we can see now, this is the resource for R2, resource number two. And we can see that it's less than or equal than 300. That's the original one. And now it says it decreased to 200. So if it decreased to 200, it means it dropped by 100. So first of all, we need to check in the right row. So this is resource number two. And we can see that the allowable decrease is 230 units. Ours decreases by 100. So the question is, can you determine the new optimal point? And the answer is actually no. Because if you go to the answer report, you'll see that this constraint is binding. And when the constraint is binding, any change on the right hand side of the resource will change the point of optimality. So for sure we know the point have changed. Can we know exactly to what? We will need to run Excel again, run solver in order to get the new point. Let's take um, a similar question about the same concept and we can say, can you determine the new profit if the numbers of pounds of R2 available decrease to 200? So again, we're looking at the same constraint. It's going to decrease to 200 from 300. The same row here that we are analyzing, but the question now is about the profit. So we already know that the point of optimality will change and we need to solve it in order to find to what point it is. But the profit, we actually can figure it out by using the shadow price. So we know to determine the new Z value, we 
know that there is a change of a drop of 100 units of resource to the right hand side and we know that the shutter price for each unit of change is 500. So we can calculate our new z value as taking the original z value and subtracting, because it's a decrease, a 100 unit decrease multiplied by 500 as the shadow price for each unit. As a result, our new z value is 79,000. Again, in order to know exactly what's the new point of optimality, we will need to resolve using solver. But we have a sense what will be our new profit? Let's see another question. The capacity of F2 can be increased by up to 40 minutes a day for an additional cost of $35 per day. What can you determine about the optimal solution and or value of the objective function, if anything, if this were done? So we're talking about F2 Okay, this is our constraint, and here it is. This is the inequality. And what they're actually telling us that it can be increased by up to 40 minutes per day. So, <coughs> sorry, we can see that the allowable increase is infinity. So there is not a problem in the range here to increase. And since, it, since it's also a non-binding constraint, how do we know it's a non-binding constraint? The shutter price is zero. So since it's a non-binding constraint with zero shutter price, as long as the change is within the allowable decrease um, increase, the optimal point um, and the value of Z will remain the same, okay? Because we don't gain any profit increase um, in this case, because we don't gain any profit increase because the shutter price is zero, there is no change to Z value. Um, it will not be smart to add this additional 40 minutes because it will increase our cost here per day. So in this scenario, there is no point of doing this. So. I hope this was a clear um, steps for you to see how sensitivity analysis is being done using solver output.